everyone and welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Josh, joined as ever by Scott Taylor because in the past week we've had plenty of trademarks from Sony who are getting around to finally trademarking the PlayStation 5 and today we might have um, a bit of information on what could be one of the very first launch games and it is Ratchet and Clank, Scott. Apparently. Ratchet and Clank's coming back. Tell me more. I don't I, you've got the exact quote. I've got the exact quote. Now, this came from Mr. Colin Moriarty, who does the Sacred Symbols PlayStation podcast. There's also a paid tier uh, called Sacred Symbols Plus. Now, this plus tier is where he was discussing uh, new upcoming projects. Um, so, the exact quote um, was that we're going to get a Ratchet and Clank in between Spider-Man 2018 and its sequel uh, on PlayStation 5. Um, I feel like it's going to be a launch game, the Ratchet and Clank game, that's long been in development at Insomniac. Now, he mentioned that last year as well, yeah. um, but not by name it was back in April last year um, and Moriarty said that um, he was like aware that there was a second party game that was coming and was talking about uh, upcoming exclusives at the time I think he talked about it being a PS4 game but I'm just assuming that because of the, the turnaround the hand like trying to juggle both Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man yeah um, you know assuming they've had to push things back and account for the PS5 and all that kind of stuff um, but at the same time mentioning that it's gonna become uh, gonna come before Spider-Man 2 kind of throws everything out of whack in terms of how long Spidey's gonna take yeah. and sets up Ratchet and Clank to be the a PS5 game well it's not entirely unheard heard of because obviously mm. Insomniac Games you know produce both of those uh, titles it's mm. not unheard of that they might have you know two studios working on these two different games they've recently been bought by Sony so yeah. you can you can assume that they have added manpower and added like resources so mm -hmm. I think that you know even though Ratchet and Clank might come first that doesn't mean that Spider-Man has to be delayed for like a long time it doesn't mean no. we're going to be waiting years and years at least in my opinion I hope not anyway that's like my dream scenario that the we get them like, a year apart yeah I think I mean obviously Insomniac uh, you know, they got bought by Sony they can start being like you know rolled out as like this is one of the companies that we're the most proud of they can kind of become a more um i don't know more like regular developer than naughty dog are like i adore naughty dog but they only they only put something out every sort of two or three years yeah um, if they can turn things around faster it makes more sense on sony's part um but the thing i said to you before we came in was that i don't think i don't i'm not going to challenge mr Moriarty, but i wonder if um i don't think ratchet and clank is as big of a, a step forward as something like spider-man is um but i also think that it would be intelligent to sort of throw a logo out for spider-man 2 maybe yeah. throw a teaser a trailer or something and then be like hey by the way here's another project from Insomniac and then you do the return of Ratchet and Clank alongside it yeah that's kind of what I'm expecting mm. I think we might even see Ratchet and Clank first as a full you know a full gameplay reveal right. and then that'll make the tease of Spider-Man 2 perhaps at the end even more surprising because you already <laughs> think you've got your full of Insomniac you know material mm. and projects mm. and then you get that added tease I do think that I don't think you can have one without the other necessarily because then people will mm. be just saying oh has this replaced Spider-Man 2 or something like that but yeah. I do think Ratchet and Clank as a franchise and uh, getting a sequel is is a smart move. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to console launches, you need a diverse array of games. You need games that you know attract a mature audience, games for younger audiences, games you need a car for game. family friendly games. You need a, you need a car game. Those are car games. And all I said to you, I said this to you before we came in. They're not going to do Knack Three. And if you're not going to do Knack Three, what's the next best thing? It's Mark Shady's favorite it's little Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clanker. I was going to say that. Good. Not the be... name of the franchise. No, Ratchet yeah. and Clank. Yeah, I see what you did. Ratchet and Knack yep, you could yeah, do. I could do that. Crossover type thing, but I think... Don't give me ideas. No, in regards to Knack 3, I mean, yeah, that was Mark City's baby, which obviously didn't catch on. Yeah. So if you need something to replace that platforming space, um, I was saying to you that I think they could do with having a new IP instead of forever leaning back on old school stuff. Um, Ratchet and Clank is about 17 years old or something yeah. at this point. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, it was once very much beloved. I think it's still, like, you know, positively revered. But the, the thing with Ratchet in, in the modern space is that, like, the last game was tied into that really pretty naff movie. I adore the Ratchet and Clank franchise and the 2016 game um, but it was tied into that movie which tugged and was obviously very critically panned and um, you watched most of it yeah, I watched well, the start of it and then I bailed the movie's not very good the movie no. is really bad and it kind of sucks that they use the actual movie footage in the cutscenes of the game the plot doesn't make any sense but the <laughs> game itself Scott was good and yes. I think a lot of people really loved it mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people played the game without watching the movie because so. of the, the reverence they had for the franchise beforehand mm -hmm. and it sold really well mm -hmm. it was critically acclaimed it looks gorgeous it plays gorgeous and I think it sparked a love again for the franchise mm. that was admittedly in decline before then and I do agree that I want to see Sony try new things but mm. because they tried something new um, last generation with Knack and it didn't really catch on <laughs> it kind of makes sense in this era of you know nostalgia heavy releases you know mm. we've had Crash Bandicoot we've had 
that spiral. We had Ratchet and Clank first, mm -hmm. and we all did very well. I can see from a purely business perspective why they'd want this, because not yes. only was the last game really good, but it's an established franchise that people love. It's relying on at least a little bit of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a it's a good little cocktail for success there. He's also not a character that looks like a shed. Like, also, that's never true. Really yeah. look, I mean, I, like, I honestly, I, I defended the first Nark. I don't know why everyone liked the second one. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like the second one. I thought the first one was totally fine. Mm. He looks terrible, and you know, the cutscenes aren't anything. But I thought the combat was all right. I thought the actual gameplay was all right. Sure. At least yeah. it was something new. It was. It was. Just, yeah. You know, very. It looks looks like an assortment of tools I, made into I mean, a character. He does look like shit. I'm not going to poo poo on Knack, is no. all I'm saying. And I would like Knack 3 eventually, but I don't think, I don't I don't think it's strong to lead with, if that's right. what I'm saying. I no, think no, this is I, bad. I think in regards to, like I said, like filling the pl platforming slot and having something that they can sort of lean back on, like, it's just, I, for me, I'm interested in what people think, like, oh, you down in the comments, what you think in regards to the overall appeal of Ratchet and Clank as this media thing. Does it make sense to have it at the PS5 launch event, um, or should they wait and, and tease out and do something like further down the line? Um, they can potentially do both, but I guess we'll see. Um, in regards to, like, other stuff that's potentially going to be there, though, there was a whole leak a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> excuse me, that me and Jules covered. Uh, you can already watch that. It's called, like, Every Detail About the PS5 uh, Reveal Event. Um, but even that has now since been shifted around because the date that was rumored that leaked apparently was the 5th of February. Clearly that's not gonna be the case anymore. Um, so the new one is February 29th, which lines up with uh, the PlayStation Theater being booked. I think it's in San Francisco uh, um, or New York. New York, I wanna say. One of the two, but there's, a, there's an official PlayStation Theater that has this mysterious booking on February the 29th and assumedly that's when it's gonna be. Um, so we sort of put our heads together and thought of like, what would be the perfect PS5 reveal lineup? And your first nomination was Horizon 2. Horizon 2, because I keep banging on about this in every single PlayStation or Sony um, video we do. Mm. I just think the timing makes sense. It was one of their biggest new IPs from the last generation. Yeah. A lot of people have been waiting a long time for it. The timing wise would put it about three and a half years from the release of the last game. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be, it would make They've sense. Had enough time. They've had enough time to release something. Uh -huh. We know that they were working on a trailer late last year. I just feel like everything is pointing towards a reveal at this event, hopefully this month, mm -hmm. for a, for an actual launch date mm -hmm. alongside the PlayStation 5. Yeah, yeah. There's um, Gorilla also have been hiring um, some people that worked on Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I think that's the return of SOCOM. I did a whole separate video on um, like, you know, secret games that could drop in 2020. You can go watch that for more information on it. Um, but SOCOM used to be this like way more sort of well-known thing that was tied to Guerrilla Games as a studio. Um, sorry, no, it was it was various Sony tied studios, but I think yeah. the Guerrilla would be the team that could bring it back um, because they've hired some people from Rainbow Six Siege. Um, one of them was like the multiplayer lead designer or something. And it makes sense if you're going to try and you know tick boxes for a launch event to have a really good Good, solid either first person shooter or third person shooter. Scott Telford. Go on. I fully agree. Good. Except from the franchise and which form it'll take. Because I do want to see Gorilla's multiplayer first person shooter game, but I do think it will be Killzone and ah! not SOCOM. Just purely because. Does anybody want Killzone? Does anybody want SOCOM? Is yeah. all I'm saying. I want both. Do you remember when you could uh, do the old voice chat on SOCOM? No, but um, <laughs> I imagine that I was wasn't rock born, our world. So I was, wasn't on the planet at that point. <laughs> no, I do want to see Sony get back into the first person shooter game because they left. Uh, the past seven years have kind of almost been entirely absent mm. of any sort of entry in that genre. Mm -hmm. And I do think they could, uh, they could have a multiplayer first person shooter game mm -hmm. and just kind of fill a gap that they're not currently catering towards. Mm -hmm. We've got excellent driving games, we've got excellent story driven third person action games, mm -hmm. but we don't have anything in that space. And they've got, even if we disagree on which franchise we'd like to see, they've mm -hmm. got SOCOM, they've got Killzone, they have these established brands that they could retrofit and reboot because they're so good at doing that into a mostly multiplayer focused offering. And they clearly have the personnel that they've mm -hmm. hired. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a strong team that they've developed and I want to see what they've been working on and hopefully it's really good also while we're on the just the, the on. thing of multiplayer i want to see this last of us factions thing i hope that's a playstation 5 Ooh. game i didn't put this in the list but i'm going to slip that in there i now. don't think they will because it'll get in the way of the rollout for last of us 2 yeah but maybe factions is the um the separate multiplayer mode that isn't because initially multiplayer was going to be last of us 2 and now it's been separated into a, a completely separate thing the same as what cyberpunk is doing um but yeah last of us factions apparently will be the last of us 2 follow-up multiplayer mode but um i mean that'd be good to tease a logo for it but i think i think they'll just show more last of us 2 stuff yeah. Um, and in the lead up to it. I realize the hypocrisy in me saying that Ratchet and Clank isn't necessarily the most like, you know, sought after media thing and then going like, hey, SOCOM, <laughs> hey, from 2003. Hey, hey, let's know down the comments. I mean, SOCOM, Ratchet and Clank, which has the more cultural weight. I do think if they did it as a first person shooter and they brought across, like I said, the Rainbow Six Siege yeah. people, you could do a nice tactical first person shooter military FPS and make it a first party thing. I mean, obviously Siege right now is still in the, the uh, Steam most played games. Um, and it makes sense to try and tick that box to have something that is, you 
you know, a go-to military style shooter that isn't Call of Duty, yeah. that is entirely Sony's to, uh, to bank off. I would go for something like that to make sense in the reveal event. Um, also, there is um, a sort of talked about for many, many years, but it was part of the uh, reveal leak from two weeks ago, uh, a new Naughty Dog IP, mm. um, which I have, and I totally recommend, the Naughty Dog 30th anniversary book, um, where they talk about a cancelled sci-fi project, and you can look at different concept art sketches for it. Um, Naughty Dog have been talking about doing a sci-fi thing for years, and you know they had it, well, to some degree of production for a while, and it got canned. Um, but at this point, we're getting to the you know the stage where a new Naughty Dog IP will start to come out again, which is one of the most exciting times in it, gaming. It really me. is, and I do think by the end of the year, we're going to see what they have been working on, mm. you know, what the new IP is. I, I don't think they'll announce it here, only because of the exact same recent reason that they won't the announce The Last of Us Factions, because The Last of Us 2 is their next big mm. game. A lot of people are looking forward to it. It doesn't really make sense to over-egg the old pudding by announcing their next game before the latest one is even out. True. But I would love to see it, Scott, if, if they tease, like they, if they if they say they show a lot of Last <clears> of Us 2 footage, mm -hmm. and then at the end sort of perhaps just tease. Maybe it's not a logo, maybe it's just a line that they're saying, like, like and after this where we're looking to the next generation and our new IP or something oh, like just... that. Just a little, little teaser, little, little sprinkle of little, salt and sugar there. Little sci-fi moose. I like the thing, uh, the way that Mass Effect initially uh, teased itself, where you got that sort of like the curvature of the Earth and then just the logo, just do something like that. Do a Starfield, do what Bethesda's doing with Starfield and show that something's coming up. Because I think, considering that, you know, every generation has its Naughty Dog IP, um, and this, the last generation was the first time they went back and did fourth installments and, and obviously sequels to The Last of Us 2. Um, Uncharted 4 was like, the first time they'd done a fourth installment. Yeah. Um, I like the idea that they've, you know, sort of going, like, okay, we can do these things, we can do Uncharted 4 Lost Legacy, and we can do A Last of Us 2, but I think it's time to do, okay, this is the next generation. And if they do sci-fi, like, I mean, that would be the one genre they've not even remotely touched yet. And it's funny you mentioned that, never really thought about it in that <coughs> way, but this generation is the first generation that we mm. haven't had a new Naughty Dog IP. We've had great yeah. games from them, exactly. but they've been uh, continuations of established franchises, mm -hmm. and that's unlike them, considering they always want to do something new, so I do think it makes sense to find out what this is mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below of the potential games that might be at the PS5 reveal and the return of Ratchet and Clank. For now, though, I've been Scott from OurCulture.com. I've been Josh from OurCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Socom, really? Crypto bite. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>